right, welcome. We're on part five of lipids, the final story. And let's review some of those functions. Uh, so cell membrane bilayer, do you remember which ones are part of our cell membrane bilayer? I hear John out there in his yard, doing his yard work, and he's like, the phospholipids. And he is correct. So it could be sphingosin phospholipids or glycerophospholipids, so either backbone. Uh, and the other choice are the glycolipids. Uh, so there's cerebrosides and the gangliosides. And the key to be part of the cell membrane bilayer is they have a hydrophilic head. So either a phosphate group or a glyco means a sugar group uh, would be the hydrophilic part of it. And then the fatty acids would be the nonpolar tails. And the other function that we have for lipids is energy storage, and that would be our triglycerides, which are the fats and oils. And again, the difference between fats and oils biochemically is that a fat technically comes from animal source, oil comes from uh, plant source, and fats usually are saturated, but there are examples of unsaturated, which we will see today, and that would be uh, fish, we call them fish oils, they're really fish fats. Uh, so the cold water fish have lots of double bonds in them and we're gonna see those examples today. And they have to have lots of kinks because in cold water, if they were saturated, they would solidify. Um, and these guys, this was, uh, they cannot work in the cell membrane because they are completely hydrophobic they are, have no hydrophilic part to them. So triglyceride means three fatty acids, so completely hydrophobic. All right, and then our third big group is communication. So the last uh, slideshow was about steroids, and today is about the eicosanoids, and they both are communicators between cells. Uh, steroids are long distance, they're hormones, so they're from one type of cell, and they can travel all through the body. Eicosanoids actually are very localized, so from one cell to the one next door to them. And there's our little squirrel friend. Shanti didn't look up and get excited, but the squirrel's wondering, when are we gonna talk about the nuts? And my dear squirrel friend, this is when we get to finally talk about the nuts, as opposed to those other lipids, which are not healthy. All right, and this is another view. This was in the very first slideshow, and then I think I've, we've seen this a couple times. Uh, so again, the fats are the triglycerides, so there is nothing hydrophilic about them. Um, waxes were our waterproofing, so on aquatic mammals in their fur, and also feathers of birds have a waxy coating. We actually have a cholesterol coating on our skin, um, and so that works as a wax. So the three at the top of the slide, they are all completely hydrophobic. And then the three at the bottom are considered lipids because they have both a hydrophobic and a hydrophilic component. So these three at the bottom of the slide, they all work in our cell membrane bilayer. They are emulsifiers. And so today, what was missing from that slide are the eicosanoids. And I always end with these because they're so wonderful. And you can see from the picture on this slide why this is the nuts, like that squirrel friend was asking. This is the cold water fish, like salmon. And yeah, this is the pupa. There's no safe oil. We should put a big red X on that. All right, the cosinoids are made from EFA. And so the FA is fatty acid, of course. And the E stands for essential. So we, there are two essential fatty acids. So my memory is there are considered 50 things that are essential, that our body needs every day. Um, there are two fatty acid types that our body cannot make, so we have to get it in our diet. And I'm going to go through those, but those are the omega-6s and omega-3s that you've probably heard about and you've been drawing. Um, water is considered an essential. Sunlight is considered an essential. Um, some of the vitamins, some of the amino acids and stuff. All right, so EFA is essential fatty acid. So the eicosanoids, there are three types. So you probably want to stop me and stop my thing and write down those words. This slide is, there's going to be, I'll tell you things you need to write down. And this whole slide, you'll want 
to pause and write down everything. So the prostaglandins, not prostaglandins, leukotrienes and thromboxanes. And actually the next three slides go through each one of these and so I'll come back to them. Um, the prostaglandins were originally isolated from the prostate gland, the first one. There are hundreds of these now um, and they're found all over our body. Leukotrienes, leuko means white blood cells. It's for those who haven't had like anatomy and biology classes. So the leukotrienes are found in our white blood cells and from thromb um, means blood clotting. So thromboxanes are part of that wonderful blood clotting pathway that you all memorize for some tests in anatomy and then you forget. Um, I memorized the two when I took anatomy and I knew it and I don't know it at all um, now. So these guys are crucial. They have a couple of big biological effects. Uh, and so this is number one, they mediate or regulate, whichever word you like, they are our inflammatory response. Inflammatory response is absolutely crucial to us. So Rowdy, um, he, hurt himself yesterday. He cut his fingertip off and our body has to respond so that he doesn't bleed to death. And that is part of the inflammatory response. So right now he has throbbing and pain, um, but that this is what's going on. Um, so he'll appreciate listening to this. So it's important. The problem is we in this country, especially a lot of people suffer from constant inflammatory issues and it's related to the diet. Uh, so it's our allergic response also. So people have allergic reactions. It's often also related that they have too much of an inflammatory response. So we do want some, we just don't want too much. And that's what we're going to be looking at tonight. All right, the other big thing these do, so besides mediating an inflammatory response, is they regulate our smooth muscle contractions. So we have different types of skeletal muscles are your big muscles. Usually this is where I flex my muscles and you get to see my massive biceps. So you can all do that at home, show off your muscles, nobody can see you and we can all giggle together. Um, smooth muscles, these are your smooth muscles in your body. So your blood vessels are smooth muscles. So thinking about blood pressure, these guys regulate our blood pressure. Your uterus, um, so for cramping, they cramps, um, any kind of menstrual problems, absolutely related to diet. Your bronchioles are your breathing tubes going into your lungs. Um, they are also smooth muscle. And actually, I just realized what I'm missing here is your intestines are also smooth muscles. Um, another big one these guys do, the cosinoids, regulate platelet aggregation. So the key word is mediate or regulate. They keep it in balance. It's all about balance. Uh, and so what platelets do, they're part of our blood. So we have our red blood cells carry oxygen around. Our white blood cells are our response to when in beta alert. Uh, and then the platelets are our blood clots. So platelet aggregation, thinking blood clot, right? Heart attack, stroke, if too much happens. But again, if you cut your fingertip off, you want your blood to clot. So you want this to work when you need it to. That's rally moaning going, oh, this is what's going on. Uh, and then gastric secretions. So these guys also regulate that mucus lining, that gastric means stomach. So the stomach has this beautiful mucus coating and that our stomach is extremely acidic, a pH of two like one of the most acidic places there is, period, on the planet is inside everybody's stomach. And that's absolutely crucial for proteins, um, denaturation. Um, so we have to protect the lining of our stomach and this mucus, uh, the cosinoids tell our stomach to keep it nice and coated. Uh, autoimmune disorders, you all know somebody with an autoimmune disorder uh, woman especially, um, and I, pretty much everybody I know, a woman who's in her 40s and 50s, except for me, has some kind of autoimmune um, disorder, and actually showing up in 20-year-olds and teenagers and stuff, and it is absolutely related to these. And the other thing, uh, acupuncture, this is 
one of many reasons acupuncture works, it actually helps to um, keep these in balance. And this is why acupuncture works so amazing on the inflammatory inflammation issues and stuff. All right. So I said I would come back and this is looking at what they, they are. You're not going to ever have to draw these. If you saw a picture, you would say, well, that's not a steroid. The steroids were the three hexagons in the pentagon that we had in the last one. And those are not the, there's no phosphate, there's no thing. Um, so the thromboxins, again, have to do with blood clotting and the leukotrienes. Leuco means the white blood cells. And these are, you don't need to know your white blood cells. You can memorize that when you take your anatomy classes. But you can see they come from fatty acids. So the end here is our carbon. And we have zigzags. And we can see there's lots of double bonds. Um, for those of you who took Chem 105, leukotriene. Ene means double bonds. Tri means three. So somebody couldn't count because I sure as heck count four double bonds here. So I don't know why it was called not called the leukoquatrienes, but you know leukotrienes. All right, um, you don't need to distinguish between these two. I can't do it without the picture. You just need to recognize these words. That's why you're not going to be doing fill in the blank. You're going to just tell me, okay, which one of these is not nicosinoid? So if it said thromboxane, leukotriene prostaglandin, estrogen, you would pick choice D and say, well, estrogen was a steroid, so it's not mucosinoid, right? And then these are the ones that usually I draw, which are the prostaglandins. So again, this is our fatty acid end. And the thing that's special about these is right here, this pentagon, that something has to close this ring. And that is COX, cyclooxygenase. And so we're gonna see a whole slide about them. But uh, inflammation absolutely is related to all the eicosanoids. Uh, the thing I mentioned, there are so many different prostaglandins. So you're going to see in the slides, abbreviated is just PG, and also in my study set uh, answer key. And there's all these different letters. Um, there are so many different letters. And then they all are one, two, or three. Um, so we're going to look at what each one of these does. So you just have to recognize a picture. If I showed you a picture one, you'd go, oh, that's a prostaglandin, which is a type of eicosanoid. All right, so that's just another picture. And again, these guys regulate inflammation. So whether you're dealing with pain, the heat that comes from inflammation, the redness, the swelling, and the loss of the limb. No, sorry, it's loss of function. But, um, and we have pills that can like turn all of this off so you don't have it. Or if you eat a well-balanced, real diet, it's in balance. And when you need it to work, it works, but not overworking. This just shows some really cool pictures. Again, the prostaglandins have this pentagon. Uh, and so it was a fatty acid chain, and an enzyme closes it like that. Uh, and this is another prostaglandin. So uh, showing in our body, they are actually truly ionized at the end. Uh, thromboxin and leukotriene. So they all have a similar um, kind of look to them. And so we're going to go through the three types. So prostaglandin one, prostaglandin two, prostaglandin three. I always start at number two. Number two, it's pretty much telling you what's happening here. Uh, the precursor for it to make it from our body is this guy arachidonic acid, and that should say um, be an A. Oh, maybe not. It's an I. And it's going to be the precursor. If it gets folded correctly, it becomes prostaglandin, the group twos. So we're just going to, I'm going to give them all an E, but it could be prostaglandin F2 and stuff. Um, so uh, you should know for your midterm, what this first number means, the 20, would be that you would draw 20 zigzags, the four, the four double bonds, and we started omega-6. So if you look here, so two, four, six, and there's our kink, and it's going to make a full C around because there's, and they're every third one. So our first one's at six, then at nine, then at 12, and then at 15. All right, the source of the group twos are animal products. So your bacon and eggs, animal, dairy, red meat, 
peanuts. So I, this is where it drives me crazy because I can't find the picture correctly online. Um, so my understanding is it's supposed to be spelled with an A and online they show it always with the I. When it's spelled with the I, that's the one that's actually an omega-3 and that is the one that's found in peanut. Um, peanuts are actually a really great source of protein. Um, I talk about this more next week as we get into proteins. Um, a lot of people have peanut allergies, but pro, um, peanuts are actually, uh, because they're not animal-based food, your body really um, loves nuts. Um, and I know peanuts are more legume. All right, arachidonic acid is not one of the two essential fatty acids. Our body actually can make it from one of the essentials. So there is another omega-6, which is in two or three slides, that is essential. And that one, our body can change it into arachidonic acid. The thing that's really interesting, um, so that's what this note is. So from gamma linoleic acid, uh, we can actually synthesize this as long as you have the enzyme. The thing that's interesting is when you eat this all the time, the eggs and bacon and all the animal food that we now eat in this country, you actually turn off this enzyme. Um, if you do go plant-based, your body will turn the enzyme back on, but it's your body protecting itself because it knows you're making too much of this. And it says, let's let's slow down. Let's slow down quite a bit. Um, you know, these guys, this prostaglandin, the group two ones, are our inflammatory response, which is absolutely crucial, vital to wound healing. You have to have wound healing, but it causes inflammation. And so you can think about it. If you eat a lot of animal products, which we do in this country, um, not we, I don't, but people eat it morning, noon, night. Um, and that's not what we were supposed to be doing as humans. Um, and so you get too much of these guys and inflammation happens even when you're not injured. Or if you get just a little boo-boo, you get huge amount of inflammation. So AA is just arachidonic acid is actually, this is really cool, it's in the membranes of the um, mast cells, which my memory of this is these guys are little kamikaze pilots. And they are the ones who are first to respond. They're like the first responders. And they get there and they just explode. And so what happens when they arrive at the place of wherever the allergy is, the mast cell disintegrates, falls apart. And what you learn in anatomy is it releases histamine and the histamine is a chemotaxic and calls everybody else to the party. Hey, there's a foreign object here. Let's all come and destroy it. Uh, what they don't tell you is the other part of the story, which is those cell membranes for the mast cell, which is the whole surface in three dimensions circling that cell is composed of arachidonic acid. Remember those phospho bilayers? Those fatty acids are arachidonic acid, and this thing just disintegrated. All of those fatty acids are released, and this guy is a thousand times stronger than histamine. So who is actually calling? Who's actually the flag saying, hello, party over here? Histamine gets all the credit, doesn't it? But if you have eating tons and tons and tons of animal meat, which we do, and the whole world imitates us now, your membranes just get saturated with this. And so you're like, everybody's gotta come to this party now, no matter what. All right, everything in moderation keeps everything balanced. So that is severe inflammation. Arachidonic acid becomes, and I keep spelling it wrong, that's great, so it should be an A. Uh, so prostaglandin number two, which calls the platelets in because you want to clot. So let's imagine you cut your fingertip off with a saw. Oh, well, we want to clot. So it calls in the platelets and the platelets are going to cause blood clotting. It says to the smooth muscles, hey, you better start constricting because we want to stop the blood from coming to this area because we don't want it to keep spurting out all over the place. 
Uh, the temperature is going to naturally rise because the white blood cells are going to be called in in a moment. And you're going to also have pain and permeability. Um, and thromboxin A2 is also formed. And thromboxin calls in more platelets. So we're really making sure we don't bleed to death here. And more vasoconstriction. So more of the smooth muscle. The thing is, Oh, and the leukotrienes are called in. So rachidonic acid does a really good job at stopping you from dying when something big happens. So again, this guy's the chemotaxis. And so he's calling everyone into the party. So you get inflammation and edema. And again, if you're eating too much meat, you're going to call in too many things into the party because so much of it has been released. Uh, and also more smooth muscle contraction. But this one's not just your blood vessels, it's telling all the smooth muscles to do their thing. So your bronchioles, wait a minute, I just like cut my finger off. Why do I need my bronchioles to be like constricting? I'm not gonna be breathing now. And your small intestine, like indigestion seriously, oh blood vessels and your uterus. Um, yeah, so everything from breast lumps to arthritis to asthma to cardiovascular disease. You can pick if you want a heart attack or a stroke. Eczema and dermatitis, which are both skin conditions. Rhinitis is the runny nose. Lupus and all the other autoimmune diseases. Um, stroke, allergies. Uh, dysmenorrhea is painful menstruals. Everything that has to do with inflammation is related to the balance of these guys. And again, these are our big cardinal signs of inflammation, and you can see them all up here. And the root of most diseases, and we can give you a pill, but wait a minute, why not just eat a healthier diet? So if you're eating this or this, over here, we're gonna see this also becomes arachidonic acid because this is those other omega-6s and your body changes them into arachidonic acid. And so apparently it is spelled with the I. I must have it wrong from way back when I learned it. All right, anyway, it goes through all this and this causes inflammation and it causes too much inflammation because our diet has become pretty much completely consuming processed food and animal-based food. All right, let's talk about COX. So COX stands for cyclooxygenase. Aspirin is a COX inhibitor. So the cyclooxygenase closes the ring. So this was our fatty acid, and then we make it into the pentagon. So this bond here, the inhibitor, aspirin, blocks that so you never make prostaglandin number two. And so you get no inflammation. You get no fever. Um, yeah. And there you go. The thing is, is aspirin blocks number one and number two. So we're blocking the constriction of the blood vessels. We're blocking the inflammation. We're blocking anaphylactic because that's the whole bronchial constriction. So it is a COX-1 and 2 inhibitor. Um, and that was just me being my geeky chemistry thing. So this is aspirin and aspirin blocks um, some held down there. And you also have any of the NSAIDs. So NSAIDs are the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. So they're anti-inflammatory because they're blocking this. Um, so ibuprofen or Celebrex is where they isolated ibuprofen, Motrin, um, there's a D and L form and only one of those forms is actually active in our body. And so Celebrex is only the active form and that's why it works faster. But these guys, besides being COX inhibitors, they actually turn off your endorphins, which is your natural pain response. And lead, um, so there are questions. That's what these bunnies are going, what are we doing here? These are all the side effects from the NSAIDs. Um, and so my mom, a couple years ago, was put on one of these new NSAIDs because she has inflammation. 
and her knees have hurt her forever. She's overweight. She's always been overweight. Um, so I tell that story when we get to the hormones because a doctor gave her and her brother something when they were little kids and they're both bigger than everybody else in the family. Um, but anyway, she had, she had knee problems. So she was going in, her doctor actually met him and he was just really delightful, but he put her on this really mild new NSAID and she didn't take it. She didn't take it. And then one day she took it. And a couple days later she took it. And then the next day she was in the hospital for a week because her stomach started bleeding. Because remember that mucus secretion? Oh, you've inhibited it and you get GI bleeding. And so what happened is she woke up and she, she didn't feel very good. And then she started vomiting blueberries and she black stuff was coming out of her in every way. Uh, and she ended up in the hospital and I was on a silent retreat. And so Joey, uh, my sister and brother kept calling Joey and trying to get my contact. And Joey said, there's nothing she can do. She's in the grandma's in the hospital. She's fine. And so I came off my silent retreat, which is so golden and blissful. And I was supposed to be going on one um, May 1st. I was going to miss a week of school. You're going to have a substitute, but they of course had to cancel it. Um, and so anyway, you go and you just sit and just imagine the silence. You guys still have yard work and distractions. You don't get any distractions. And so you hit a sweet spot. It takes a while because a lot of dirty, yucky stuff comes up. And then you just hit this golden, beautiful silence. Anyway, I came out of the silence. I didn't even want to turn on my phone. And I got back here to Portland. And I decided to call Joey to ask him if he needed me to pick up anything. And I saw all these messages from my brother and sister. And I ignored them, except then one caught my eye. And it said something about mom and hospital. And I just called my mom. I didn't call my brother or sister, and I knew if I heard my mom's voice, I would know what was going on, and my mom was just delightful. Well, I called the hospital, was like, what's going on? And I said, my mom's in the hospital, and so they hooked me up to her, and and so then my sister, I called, Joey's like, yeah, I call Annie Ann, and my sister's like, oh my gosh, you know, I can go there for two days. Okay, I forgot to tell the whole story. The very last meditation, my father, who died 10 years ago, his voice came to me, just has never happened and said you need to go take care of your mom and I'm like oh we'll call her more I'll call her more but um I said to my sister oh I need to go take care of her so I was very blessed I gotta go and spend two weeks with my mom um and she had this test done where she had to swallow this pill that is the biggest pill in the world and it has a little camera in it and it took a picture of her whole small intestine. So for 12 hours, she walked around with a little radio receiver on. And I nursed her back to health, fed her a whole food plant-based diet, and all the neighbors who kept coming over to visit her, and she kept inviting to lunch, and I kept making more and more food. Um, and my mom recovered, and she's doing great. All right, and she doesn't take aspirin or any of the NSAIDs. In fact, they used to recommend low-dose aspirin for stroke, People had had stroke to prevent the blood clotting and they don't anymore because it turns out they were having issues, um, as many issues. So why not instead, are there any natural COX-2 inhibitors? There sure are. There are natural ones. Uh, somebody, I'm sorry, pick Ginger. This topic's not available this year in 2020, um, but it does double duty. It is, there you go, ginger is both a COX inhibitor and it inhibits the formation of leukotrienes, but because it's a natural source of it, it, there we go, it's double duty. It is actually works better than aspirin and in Chinese medicine, it's the second herb that you learn about. Uh, first one is mahuang and yeah, ginger and garlic are amazing and everything. It is anti-inflammatory. It's great for your stomach. So anytime, right, the original ginger ales all had ginger in them because they help make your stomach feel better. Uh, and this picture is there because you can't make curry, good curry without ginger and turmeric, which is another natural cox too. And the thing is, is when it comes from mother nature, it knows how to regulate this in a way that you don't end up with this bleeding ulcers inside of you and end up in the hospital for a week. Um, 
So turmeric actually, says, this is amazing to me. We'll talk about prostaglandin, the group threes, they are like the greatest gift of all time. And so somehow it shunts the omega sixes towards the omega threes um, and green tea. Carotenoids also, so eat your carrots. Green tea, nobody's picked turmeric or green tea or carrots. Uh, this is not carrots, that is parsley, oregano, coptis, which is mushrooms from China, um, actually from the Himalayas, um, but in Chinese medicine they use them. Uh, rosemary, they're all natural. You should be cooking with spices. You should be planting a beautiful herb garden in your backyard right now and then go out. Oregano grows wild here. You just have to buy one little oregano and you'll have 20 by next year in your backyard and you just go out and pick them for every meal and put some in making your own uh, little salad dressing. Oh and fish oils. I cannot recommend that. All fish oils are going to be oxidized to heck so you should not be taking fish oils. Just go eat your oregano. Have green tea, turmeric, and ginger. All right. Um, I didn't even realize that was in there. That picture's there because acupuncture is also one of the best and sads um, natural that there is. And these work, they don't turn something off. They help to keep it mellow in balance. It's really amazing. And it is because we are electromagnetic creatures. We actually work energetically. And so they help to keep everything in this beautiful balance. Whereas drugs, they only know on and off and it doesn't work that way. You can't just completely turn one off because you need that inflammatory response. Oh, and then don't eat so much animal products. In fact, why do you need to eat it at all? It causes Alzheimer's. All right, let's look at the other omega-6. So sunflower seeds. So I heard this awesome story. I never knew this. Um, so sunflowers are called sunflowers because they follow the sun. So if you go and stand in a field of sunflowers, it was a story this woman who was so beautiful told the story. And so her grandmother, she was Native American, made them. So when she was a little girl and they went out and every hour and they would see if the sunflower face, the face of the sunflower always faces the sun and that it moved with the sun. And they said to their grandma, well, what happens at night? And the grandmother just smiled. Maybe some of you know the answer all the sunflowers turn towards each other. They all look towards each other as a group when the sun has set. So at night, all the sunflowers will look towards each other. It's kind of maybe our lesson that we're getting right now. All right, so linoleic acid is one of the essential fatty acids. You have to get linoleic acid in your diet. Your body cannot put a bond. Our body can only make double bonds at 9, 12, 15, 18. We can't make them at 3 and 6. So double bonds are always 3 apart. It has to do with the enzyme. Um, the plant world can make them at 3 and 6. So we have to get our omega-6s from nature. So linoleic is considered, is dubbed the one that is essential because the one on the previous slide could be made from this one. Uh, linoleic acid gets changed by your body into gamma linoleic acid, and then gamma linoleic acid gets changed into prostaglandin E1, so the one categories. All right, so the ones and twos are the omega-6s. The twos were the ones that came from animals. Some people lack the enzyme, that changes from linoleic to gamma linoleic. Uh, that would be people from the Northern um, European. All right, so what is our big source? Are the seeds, sunflower seeds, safflower seeds, sesame, soy, corn, cotton seeds, gamma linoleic, so that is for linoleic. Gamma linoleic comes from mother's milk, has the perfect amount in it. Uh, spirulina, evening primrose, which is this picture up here, comes out in the evening apparently. Uh, borage oil and black currants. So um, if you are into natural medicine, 
uh, women when they're going through menopause, a lot of the symptoms they have, these are the ones that are often recommended for a lot of um, issues they might be having and um, remember what they did. Oh, this is big. I should have written this even bigger, like huge. You get too much of this, way too much. I go, well, wait a minute, you're just talking such lovely things and such a beautiful bright yellow slide. And now you're telling us a frowny face? Like, okay, okay, the previous one you said was bad because it came from animal products. You shouldn't be eating animal products. Uh, this one is a huge problem now because of these seeds. These are the seeds that are in all of the processed food that you eat, including those beautiful little power bars, protein bars that people want to use. Everything's got these oils in. They're highly refined uh, and you're getting way too much of them. Now with that, I add sunflower seeds to my salads, usually once a week. Sesame seeds I'll put over tofu because I don't eat processed food. I don't eat oils. Um, and if you get too much of omega-6s, you get cancer and inflammation. The inflammation we saw from the previous slide. And yeah, it's not good. Um, the thing that's interesting is apparently you can't get too much gamma linoleic and that's because it comes from such small sources that, um, and it's probably because it's not processed. I have question marks there because I don't fully understand why, but they do all the sources that I've read have said you, you really can't overdo gamma linoleic. Um, we have overdone the linoleic. Uh, when I started teaching 25 years ago, this was barely an issue. And now it's a huge issue uh, and it's all over online. Um, and so this is why they say, do the benefits outweigh the risks? And again, 25 years ago, 20 years ago, it was like, well, I remember going to a talk at the acupuncture college. And it was like, oh no, you need omega-6s. And now, oh, absolutely, we get way too many. Our ratio is so far off and I'll show that. But look at this, it's highly refined. You should not be having any oils. They're refined, they're oxidized to heck. They're, yeah, no, no oils. And this is why. This is our ratio. I've seen these ratios, all different numbers, one to two, one to three, one to four, one to five. It doesn't really matter. This is what the average American is getting, is a one to 20. They're not getting enough omega-3s and they're getting way too much omega-6s. These pictures down here, these are the omega threes, um, and it's not. It's we're just getting way too many omega sixes because it's in all of the processed foods. Um, this is just another slide. Oh, look at that! See, it tells you where I got these from. <laughs> um, so our omega three, omega threes, we're going to see in the next slides. They're the good guys. They help to keep everything that all that inflammation that was happening from the omega sixes, the omega threes keep it in balance. If you're getting too many omega-6s, you don't have the counterbalance to keep it in balance. Um, so the omega-6s were the ones that are constricting the blood vessels. The omega-3s are the ones that are gonna keep them dilated. And so when inflammation, when we're not bleeding to death anymore, we do want everything to be dilated. Um, and this is gonna be, this, this is a great slide. Again, fish oils, there's nothing good about them. You really should not eat any oils. Um, even that pill form, they're, they're gonna be oxidized. These guys have so many double bonds. There's no way you're gonna get them without being oxidized. And then the other issue is fish and mercury, which I have a slide on that. Uh, I found this fascinating because I did not know, oh, this is corn fed meat. Um, because corn oil and oils, you should not have these. Don't give them to the homeless, just throw them out. Um, all right. So here they're saying it's about a 16 to one and the ratio should be closer to a two to one or now they're even saying a one to one. Um, so omega sixes are your pain. Um, airway constriction doesn't sound good. That's asthma. Um, and omega threes. This is another one. This is from uh, a paleo site. They're still big into the paleo man. The 1939 man. There's a little bit of a gap there. It's about a one to eight ratio. Claim Eskimos had a four, have a four to one, and then we're up to yeah, modern man. Um, 
fascinating. So these are just some of the sources. So again, you're, we're going to see a slide, a better slide than this. Um, the cold water fish are really high in, um, oh, and there's sturgeon caviar. Interesting. Uh, and these are the highly processed oils. All right. So omega-3s, these guys are wonderful. Again, I need a big red X over these. You cannot have oils. They're highly processed. They're oxidized. I, I don't care about all that stuff that says, oh, olive oil, that's been cold pressed and blah, blah, blah. All right, flax. I have a slide about flax. We'll come back to that. Uh, your nuts, amazing. Your leafy greens, winter squash. Winter squash is amazing. And a lot of our legumes are filled with it. And of course, cold water salmon. There's a butt there, and we'll get to that. So omega-3s are the precursors to the third group, and these are the good guys. So we need all of them. The omega-6s caused inflammation, and these guys kept it in balance. We're getting too much of the products that cause the inflammation and not enough of these to keep it in balance, so we're just way out of balance. But nuts is where the squirrels are happy. All right, so... Essential fatty acid number two is alpha linolenic acid. I don't know why they always put the alpha in the front, but you have to. And it has an N. So this one, I know I did not spell it. I spelled it correctly. Uh, so it's alpha linolenic acid. This is your omega-3, and this is the other essential fatty acid. Uh, and it is the precursor for EPA and DHA, which you may have heard of. Those are the fish oils. And what they stand for, you do not need to know this. Um, nobody knows it except the biochemists, maybe. Ecosopentanoic acid and docohexanoic acid, which means that they have 20 or 22 carbons and five double bonds. Remember what I said, the fish oils? Oh, if you're getting them as oils, they're so oxidized because there's so many double bonds. Imagine if I gave you this one to draw in the midterm. Five double bonds? This thing would completely curve around on itself. You'd be making a full circle. Six double bonds? All right, well, and then they make the prostaglandin and sources of the alpha linolenic acid uh, is flax. 54% of flax is actually this. We're going to do a slide on flax. Chia, so cha 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 chia. Uh, pumpkin, pumpkin seeds. Love that on my salad. Hemp, seeds, uh, walnuts, soy. Chinese medicine, when I was pregnant, the teachers all told me I needed to eat a handful of walnuts every day because they look like little brains, and that would make Joey's brain beautiful. <laughs> and the other big source is your dark leafy greens. So you should all be eating a salad every day. Hopefully you're doing your healthy change. Can't really keep track of you as well as I could before. Uh, and then the sources of the fish oils are mother's milk uh, is actually this perfect ratio of omega-3s and omega-6s. Uh, and when it's coming out of the mom, it can never get oxidized because from the nipple right into the baby's mouth, there's no room for this to get oxidized. And also walnuts are really high in DHA, like the highest source of it. They started adding its formula and it's gonna be highly oxidized and EPA is really high in fish. All right, uh, and then this was a study I read like before most of you were born that they did this study in Africa where um, the children were very malnourished and had a lot of learning disabilities and by actually just seeding the ponds, the lakes with fish and spirulina, uh, spirulina is really high in some of the B vitamins, but that's actually a controversial thing also. Um, anyway, most Americans don't get enough. And all right, let's talk about omega-3s. And they are the anti-inflammatory. They are anti-contraction. So they balance out. So I don't like the prefix anti, uh, and I meant to fix this slide. So they regulate inflammation. They calm down the inflammation, they calm down the contraction, so they relax the muscles, they relax the platelets, so they are an antifreeze, is how my nutrition teacher um, described it many, many years ago. Uh, otherwise, right, we don't want these guys 
getting frozen in the water. So they relax our smooth muscle. So uterus contractions, so if you get cramping, oh, you should all start doing plaques every day. We're gonna talk about that in a moment. Uh, blood vessels, so blood pressure, uh, and also bronchioles, if you think about it, I left that out there, but for asthma and stuff, uh, they regulate stomach mucus secretions, which is a protection, and they decrease inflammation because they actually help to keep the prostaglandin twos in check. So skin issues, autoimmune disorders, um, arthritis, absolutely, these guys work great. They regulate platelets, so they actually keep the platelets from sticking. Um, and they don't do it in a way where they're not gonna keep working. They will work if you cut yourself, your platelets, you want them to, they actually make it work even better. We don't want our platelets getting stuck and causing blood clotting and causing heart disease. Um, these guys work better than any drug. And like I said, it's antifreeze for the blood uh, without the risk of hemorrhage. So vascular renewal and it's gotta be from the diet. Pills do not do any good. You've gotta do it in your diet. Um, and you can't do the oils because they're oxidized to heck. All right, so there's our salmon in the background. Uh, so this slide is wonderful that I found online from Mother Jones, which is an amazing magazine. Uh, and it shows the red is the mercury. These guys are the top feeders. The shark, the swordfish are eating the other fish and accumulating the mercury. You cannot eat shark and swordfish. I, when I grew up in the East Coast, oh my gosh, shark and swordfish are amazingly delicious, but you can't eat these. Oh, and look at that, right? You all hear it, albacore tuna, you see albacore tuna. Uh, I'm not seeing very many omega-3s in there and I'm seeing a heck of a lot of mercury. Right. I fell into that too. Several people were like, oh my gosh, I have so far to go or sending me these really sweet emails. I used to buy Joey albacore tuna because everyone said, yeah, I'd buy bluefin tuna and I'd buy like the good ones that were pole caught and I'm not using the nets and I'm not destroying it. And then I realized how much mercury is in there and there's really nothing good. All right. Um, yeah, if you go to Maine, you might have to have a lobster, but not anymore. Uh, all right, so let's look down here. So there's our West Coast salmon. You all know Atlantic salmon, there is no such thing as wild Atlantic salmon. So the farm salmon jumped over the gate into the Atlantic and it took only like 10 years and there's no wild salmon in the Atlantic anymore. Um, yeah, but there's pretty negligible amounts of mercury. This is the one that's really cool. I did not know this until last year. I had several students from the Philippines who'd grown up very young in the Philippines and they lived here now. Uh, and tilapia is what's used in the rice fields to eat the mosquitoes and stuff. And then they eat, um, the people will eat the rice and then the tilapia. Uh, and so again, really low levels of mercury and those not bad. Uh, anchovies, really high levels of your omega-3, salmon, sardines, holy mackerels, not on here. Oh, there it is. There's holy mackerel, uh, even the trout. Um, so there you go. You can stop it and write down. I don't eat fish. We eat it like once a month because people will go fishing and bring us freaking amazing fish. I didn't eat it for many, many years. I was like anti, no, you can't. Um, and... Joey had some skin issues and that's why I started eating it so that Joey would eat it. And a lot of the skin stuff has gotten better. Um, but again, it's like, we don't eat it that much. And it's people who've gone and caught it and bring it to us, which we're really blessed to have that. And usually somebody at the potluck will make something. We don't have a potluck. Unless somebody wants to host it at their house. All right, let's talk about chicha chia and hemp, hemp seed also. Um, and I actually had somebody did, a, this is their topic and it was wonderful. Somebody last year did um, salmon and he was actually a fisherman. And so it was really a fascinating topic because he, he really got into the chemistry of how they find their way back home. Um, so there you go, you can have a little chia pet. And these guys are filled with fiber besides the omega-3s. I put this in my smoothie every day. 
Um, it makes it nice and thick and it's awesome. It enhances your exercise performance. So Miranda, you're into exercise stuff. Maybe this is your topic. And so I had a student who did this as their paper and this was the coolest thing. Um, these are all actually from his paper summarized into one little slide. But the Aztec warriors actually would carry these little pouches and all they had in it was chia and that's all they ate for the day was their energy to go into battle. Um, all right, so they regulate inflammation, blood pressure, cholesterol, uh, and dyslipidemia, which is a bad profile of your lipids, meaning wrong ratio. Uh, also insulin, um, so she is really good for diabetes, type two diabetes. Um, they swell up, so you make, yeah, so they also swell up in you, which helps you to feel full. I'm really high in fiber. Um, so really cool topic if somebody wants that flax is freaking amazing so before I go on with this you cannot eat flax like this so it's different from hemp and chia um, our body cannot break down the covering on flax so you have to buy it ground up it used to be I had a coffee grinder uh, and I would grind the flax myself and then use it but you can buy Bob's Red Mill and it's in that sealed bag, so it does not go through oxidation. And then once I open the bag, you gotta keep it refrigerated because it's highly susceptible to oxidation because of all the double bonds. Um, but before you open the bag, the way they seal the bag and do the whole thing, um, and that's actually how I get it because it's actually quite an economical price. Um, and the thing is, is the coffee grinder, you can't use a coffee grinder that you used for something else. And I know I've had people tell me they put it in their Nutribullet or whatever, and I've done that and it really doesn't grind it. Uh, and these things will come out whole and so it doesn't really do anything you can't get. Um, and you do not want to do flax oil, absolutely not. It's oxidized. I don't care who made it and says, no, no, we flash freezed it and it's not oxidized. Oh, it's oxidized. Um, anyway, everything good. Regulates um, blood sugar levels, keeps your bones healthy, keeps your immune system healthy, inflammation re regulates, uh, healthy eyes and kidneys, uh, and keeps your lipids in balance, so the HDLs and LDLs, your cell membranes, uh, insulin, I already said, brain growth. It improves, right, um, your brain, half of the brain growth is in utero, uh, and the other half is in that first year of life. And so mother's milk has omegas and mom should be doing flax to keep everything healthy. It improves memory and learning. It regulates your brain function, your mood. Uh, it helps to fight cancer, infections, and it balances your hemoglobin. So I'm realizing now, I don't know what happened to the other slide because this starts at six through 10. Um, the other big thing that I will mention is skin. It has a huge effect on all different skin things. So there's a thing called tenting, where if you pinch your skin, it stays like a tent. Uh, and I had a student 20 years ago and her son had severe ADHD and was on medication. And he, because of the medication, he had these skin disorders. And when I did this talk, she went home and they started doing flax and she said it took three days and his skin got the elasticity back. And she was just amazed how fast this worked. So it is four tablespoons of the flax ground up a day. However, there's a big however. I have been told for the past 20 years by my students, you gotta start with one tablespoon and then you grow up to two. Now you guys are all at home, so it's not as big a deal, but if the amount of fiber you're gonna get is going to make you very regular. Uh, and so if you are working, you gotta start slow. Um, and so I just sprinkle it on my salads. I sprinkle it in our smoothie. I sprinkle it in everything I can. I honestly don't do four tablespoons a day um, because I'm doing a lot of the other ones too. The other thing about flax is it's really high in lignans. Lignans are a protein. Uh, broccoli's really known for lignans. Lignans are really big for breast health uh, and for breast cancer prevention and stuff. And flax is the biggest source of it. Um, and the last thing here, number 10, it makes your hemoglobin um, bind oxygen better, stabilizes your red blood cell membranes, um, right? 
Oh, little sad fish. Who would draw a picture like that? These antagonists means anti. These are the things that block prostaglandin 3. So caffeine has gotten a really bad rap. There are some amazing things caffeine does. Um, I do drink coffee in the morning these days because I really enjoy the taste of it. I don't add all that stuff to it that other people do. Um, alcohol, tobacco, yeah, oh, all these things cause so many. Oh, the whole yeast thing from sugar. I didn't even talk about that when we did all the sugar stuff. Insulin, obesity, trans fats, um, just crappy diet, really, right? Radiation, of course, eating too much of the omega-6s, too much um, process, too much animal food, uh, all your vitamin deficiencies, especially C, stress, heavy metals, all these things are bad for you anyway, so of course they're going to affect that. Agonists would be, oh, let's be healthy, and going back, green tea again. Green tea is a cool topic. I've had almost every year somebody picks that, or pick an herb. These guys are really fun. Um, so symptoms, this is like really easy. You just feel fatigue as opposed to having lack of energy or feeling down. I mean, it's all the same thing when you're just feeling like you don't have energy and you're feeling achy. Uh, look at all those double bonds. Look at that beautiful C it's making. It's an omega-3. All right. Uh, some more, right? Everything, nothing here looks good from skin disorders, hair disorders, uh, arthritis, susceptible to infection, um, low body weight or obesity, failure to thrive, right? Diabetes is DM, prostate issues, infertility, PMS. Um, there's just a lot more than 10. Cancer, heart disease, varicose veins, gallstones, liver problems, et cetera, kidney problems, everything, global status. Nepal doesn't have any status. Mexico doesn't have any status. Um, yeah, but look at this. All the developed parts of the world, look at this. These are like the places that have the biggest outbreaks. Italy, England, the U.S. India's got issues right now, too. Um, and this is the Middle East and Brazil. They all have the lowest omega-3s. They hold like immune systems that are not functioning. So if you want to cause inflammation, keep eating like this. Processed meat. Oh my gosh. It's a class one carcinogen like plutonium. Just go start licking plutonium. Um, or if you start putting this, okay, again, got to cross that out. I can't recommend any oils. Um, I used to, not too long ago. Tart cherries are really hard to find, but they're like this amazing anti-inflammatory. Uh, your orange vegetables, eating the color orange, not just carrots, there's so many orange vegetables, and the onions and garlic, oh, and pineapple. I haven't had pineapple in a long time, but all the leafy greens, spinach, kale, all of them. Oh, and this is a picture of my dog and my cat. Because today I was listening to a talk on YouTube and I was on my bike and it went to a commercial and I didn't feel like changing it off. And it was, I had to do, it actually ended up being really cool, but I thought I should put a slide in to remind you, your animals, if they're eating processed animal food, they're not going to be healthy. Um, and so most animal food has preservatives added, has, this is like really gross. It's not actually meat. It's what they scraped up off the floor of the slaughterhouse that you're feeding to your animals. Um, the corn and the wheat, it's all the pulp from it. I thought this was interesting, this thing I took. Oh, they said not to give them avocados, and there's a picture of Rocky would like go crazy. I had to feed him right before, or else he'd be meowing. And I didn't understand this. I don't know what a person talks is but um somebody picked the avocados as their topic so maybe they can find what that has to do with it um anyway we feed them whole food rocky had serious issues when we got him uh and he he's like at least half the size he was he could not jump um and he can now and he's not afraid of people and his skin issues all healed up and stuff but they actually need omega-3s and you don't want to give it to them in a pill. Um, 
So feed them real food. All right, another slide showing you, I'm just trying to emphasize processed and animal products are gonna cause inflammation and you need more of these in your diet. Again, I can't recommend those pills, the big red X. Um, fish once in a while. Again, mercury is a serious issue. Um, we've polluted our food choices and you do have a choice. You can go for inflammation. You know you don't want that. You guys have time now. Start cooking at home. It's so wonderful. It is so beautiful. It's like this work of art especially those you have families, right? What an inspiration. The books that I always read are about these kids who their best memories of childhood are sitting in the kitchen playing while their mom cooked. And then the kid ends up loving food and cooking, like real food, not this stuff. This is not real. All right, you have a choice. This is another picture I found. This is the last slide. This is watermelon after one day, and this is after 80 days real food is going to decompose. And this was a Happy Meal. This is almost a whole year later. The Happy Meal looks the same. I don't even think there's fungus growing on it. There's that Twinkie experiment that's been going on for decades now and the Twinkie is still what it was because it's completely not real. All right, good night. And don't forget you have um, midterm. Um, next so it's on all the sugar stuff and all the lipid stuff uh the soap lab is uh due the day of your midterm and the information from the soap lab is absolutely on your midterm so um study sets one two three and four your quizzes one two three and four and i'll be posting the test monday evening and you'll have 24 hours you can download it and do it anytime in that and see you in office hours this week Good night. You don't have to do Joey's telling me.